Hey everybody, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel. Shula Ruler here with another video on transformer theory. In this video, what we're going to take a look at is calculating short circuit current in a transformer, which is always needed when we're trying to determine what the interrupting rating of our overcurrent device is. We're going to take a look at a single phase as well as a three phase bank to determine what the short circuit current available is to each bank. In a previous video, we took a look at performing a short circuit test on a transformer to determine what the percent impedance was of the transformer. This is a number that we're gonna bring forward with us into this calculation. I'm just gonna give it to you in the examples. We're not gonna go through and calculate what the percent impedance is. It's generally something that's given to you with the transformer. So let's get to it. transformer machine drawn here it would just be a single phase we've got our primary winding in red and we've got our secondary winding in green what we're gonna do is just give you the basic numbers needed to perform a short circuit calculation on this so we're gonna start first off we're gonna say that this is a 75 kVA transformer what we know about transformer theory kVA in is equal to kVA out if I was calculating the primary current on this transformer or the secondary current on this transformer, I would just simply use the 75,000 VA given to me. And then we're going to fire on here as well. We're going to say that this transformer has a percent impedance of 2.5% IZ. So these are the numbers that I'm going to need to perform my short circuit current calculation. Before we do that though, we're also going to fire some voltages on here. We're going to say that this is a 600 on the primary step down to 120 volts on the secondary. So before we get rolling on this, let's write out our formula. Our I short circuit formula is equal to current on the secondary times 100 divided by percent IZ. Now there's variations of this formula. I like to use the I secondary times 100 because what it does is automatically converts that percent impedance. It converts it to its decimal form without having to punch it into the bottom part of my formula. That way I can just go over and grab the actual raw percentage. I can just use 2.5% in this example or just 2.5, right? That's what that times 100 does. So before we do that, I actually need to know what is my I secondary. So we're going to say I secondary in this case is equal to my VA rating of 75,000 VA divided by, in this case, it's a single phase transformer, so I don't have to worry about using root three. I do need to grab that line voltage though, and in this case, our line voltage on the secondary is 120 volts. So I'm just going to go 75,000 VA divided by 120. It gives me a secondary rated current of approximately 312.5 amps. So with that, I can actually just bring this up into my short circuit current calculation. I can substitute those variables for values and it looks like this. We should see I short circuit on this transformer is 312.5 amps times 100 divided by, I just need to grab that 2.5. I don't have to convert it. That's what that times 100 does. And this spits out a number somewhere in the range of 12,500 amps. This is the available short circuit on this system. That is the potential fault current on this system. Why that number is important to us again, if I'm going to grab my overcurrent devices, one thing I need to be very cognizant of when doing it is what is the interrupting rating of my device? Can the interrupting rating, can my device handle that 12,500 amps? If we think about a standard interrupting rating on an overcurrent device, generally being 10,000 amps, if it's not marked, that would not sufficiently protect us in the event of a short circuit. I would have to go with something that is at least my short circuit current or higher. I can always be higher with interrupting rating. My short circuit current can never be higher than my interrupting rating. So. Let's take this to a three-phase application. It's exactly the same formulas. The only difference is obviously with that three-phase calculation, we're going to have to be aware of when do we use that root three number. Poof, just like that, we've converted this over to a three-phase bank of transformers. We're going to consider this to be one transformer, and I'm just going to give it one total rating here. We're going to say again that this is a 75 kVA three phase, we're going to say it is 4160 primary volts step down to 
600 volts on the secondary and we're going to say it again has a 2.5 percent iz so imagine again that this is one box with three of these single phase transformers inside right we have our abc terminals here again we're not going to focus too much on the transformer theory of it we want to use this to calculate the short circuit current available from this system right so we're going to look at our same formula which is i short circuit is again equal to our I secondary times 100 divided by percent IZ, right? And in this case, we need to know what is the I line secondary. And it's simple to determine, again, using the exact same formula that we did before, and it looks like this. The current on the secondary is going to be equal to the KVA rating of the transformer, which again, in this case, is 75,000 VA divided by E line times in this case root three because it is a three-phase transformer and if you're punching this into your calculator it's crucial that you don't forget those brackets so that your calculator follows that proper sequence of operation right so 75,000 divided by e line times root three again because it is a three-phase transformer in this case gives us in the neighborhood of we should see somewhere around 72 0.17 amps that is my rated secondary current on this transformer we can now again substitute those values for variables and simply run the numbers if i look at my i short circuit formula again is equal to the i secondary which we calculated out to be 72.17 amps times 100 divided by again all i need to do is grab that 2.5 because that times 100 already converts it over and uses its decimal form right so times 100 divided by 2.5 should give us a number somewhere around 2886.75 amps which again we need to be cognizant of that number when selecting our overcurrent devices specifically with that interrupting rating in mind being that this is very small uh, a standard 10,000 amp interrupting rating would suffice for this system. Hopefully this has helped with understanding calculating short circuit currents. Feel free to hit me up in the comments below there. And as always, definitely give me a thumbs up if you want. Uh, hit subscribe on that and then hit that little bell notification for any upcoming future videos. I am going to try to get a video out once a week for you folks. And I really appreciate the support. So we'll see you next time.